Okay, this is a class Asteroidea video following on from the general characteristics of the phylum Echina dermata. We're going to go through the sea stars, the classic sea star shape um, in this video. Here's a crown thorn starfish from the Kermadex. Here's a pincushion or fire brick starfish. This one was taken from the Bultner Rocks. Um, they're really quite beautiful, and we get these at Mayer Island as well, offshore islands in uh, eastern New Zealand. Okay, let's have a look at the general body plan of a starfish. Get my pen up here, go with red. All right, so obviously arm. All right, so they have, um, in general, with the pentamerous radial symmetry, they have five arms, okay? They often have more arms though. Interestingly, it is usually a prime number of arms, okay? So this is the top view, so top, and of course the other one is the bottom view. You flip the number. So they have an anus in the center, which you probably won't be able to see. They have the madreporite on the upper surface which uh, we'll have a good look at uh, a little bit later. And um, that is the sieve that we saw in the water vascular system in the first video. And you can see these little two feet sticking out, which have a special sensory capability. Usually they are light sensitive, so they have like a rudimentary eye or a photoreceptive area on each of their arms. Okay, if you flip the starfish over, you get this side, and that's called the oral surface. Oops. Uh, the aboral surface is the top. We're, thinking, we're looking at the oral surface. Oral surface because the mouth is right in the center, and that is what you'll see when you flip them over. And that mouth is connected. You'll see all these little grooves, and that coming out the star the star's arms those grooves are called the ambulacral groove what it means to be ambulatory is means you can walk that's something that you'll see in uh, uh, medical uh, terminology and the two feet come shooting out of the the ambulacral groove if the ambula if the uh, starfish is uh, threatened, it can re withdraw all of the two feet into the ambulacral group so they can't be nipped off or predated upon. Here is a nice picture of the skin of starfish. And one of the things I like about this, um, about this image is that it just shows how amazingly complex the starfish really is. They just seem very basic, but when you actually start looking at the skin, you can see lots and lots of different features. Okay, so these little finger-like projections here, obviously, uh, are uh, they're very thin. They have a lot of surface area, and the whole reason for that is that they are essentially like a gill. They're known as papulae. P-A-P-U-L-L-A-E, and they are, with a high amount of surface area, able to help exchange gases like carbon dioxide and oxygen uh, through diffusion um, more easily because of that surface area. So that's how they breed these starfish. Okay, they have these things here, and these little things here and if you look at the back of a starfish it's funny when you put anything in the ocean like a piece of metal or wood or really a piece of plastic or anything in the ocean and come give it two months and come back to it you'll find that all sorts of larvae having have settled on it and crusted it there's a high amount of competition for settling space for all the larvae that are swimming around and what happens is that you will never see an encrusting organism on the back of a starfish like you do with uh, the back of a like 
for example, a gastropod shell that's, um, uh, you know, if you pick one up, they'll, they'll usually barnacles and things on, on the back. Now these ones have these things called pedicillaria, and you can see that some of them are open, like so. You can see these little open things. And they are essentially little jaws that are protective of the surface of the starfish, and they will stop things from settling on that. In some cases, they can even be poisonous and uh, capture prey. Here's a picture of the pedicillaria. It's um, a multi-organ uh, structure. It's got these little teeth here, uh, like a pincher, much like a crab claw. All right, muscles. Okay, so it's a complex organ. So you can see these pedicillaria can be quite the evil looking, dangerous proposition for a small organism living on the surface. Check these teeth out, they're really, they're really something right here. And that is a um, fish catching uh, pedicillaria, okay? So some of these things are, are meant, used to actually catch prey. All right, so, and then they have these ones around the spines Okay, which come up and protect uh, the spines. And if you're wearing a uh, cloth glove, you can actually put your hand on the back of some starfish, and these pedicillaria will clamp down on the on the uh, glove, and you can it will you can pick the starfish up using nothing but uh, an open palm. So these ones here are closed and at rest. This is more of a threatened posture where the uh, pedicillary will rise up the spine. Uh, here you can see all the spines. Uh, go here, spines. Each one of these is a spine. And you can see the ring of pedicillaria around the spine. So that is the characteristic of the back of starfish. Okay, we'll go past this. All right, so the ambulacral groove, we've already shown you what it looks like. And they have ambulacral spines, which close over the ambulacral groove. Here we see the ambulacral spines right here. And what happens is they come together much like, uh, like a teeth or something that come together and close over and protect this groove and all the tube feet if something were wanting to try to get in there and nip away, predate on it. Oops. All right, so the, what do we need to say? Here's the internal structure of the starfish. They have two stomachs. Okay, The um, first stomach is called the cardiac stomach and then they have another stomach called the pyloric stomach. Uh, so this is the this is the pyloric stomach at the top, the cardiac stomach at the bottom and then when they go to eat their prey they actually stick their cardiac stomach out of the uh, the mouth onto the prey and to digest the prey outside of the um, outside of the body. They can pry open a muscle shell and then if they can only get a gap of less than uh, of around one tenth of a millimeter they can get their stomach to go into the the muscle shell and digest the muscle in its shell. Okay? They have um, gonads of each of the arms, and then they have these big digestive glands called pyloric cica. Okay, they're paired in each arm, and they have to be huge because since they do external digestion, they need to um, have massive amounts of uh, digestive enzymes pumped out because a lot of them will just wash away or diffuse away because of the the external uh, digestion. Here's a picture of a starfish trying to pry open a muscle. Okay, 
Okay. Uh, pyloric seca, okay, we've talked about. Cardiac stomach, averted through the stomach, and we've mentioned most all of this. Reproduction, generally diuresis, so they'll either be male or female. And at times, if you open up a starfish uh, to certain times of the year, they are absolutely packed with, um, with eggs or sperm that are ripe. Other times, like when we do a, a dissection in lab, we probably won't see much except for very uh, uh, small gonads. So they produce as many as two and a half million eggs. They're prolific very fecund breeders. Here's a picture of a um, starfish and a stream of sperm being uh, broadcast out. Uh, this is a classic pose that you'll see. It's very difficult to actually just see. But there's a small amount of like opaque area that is uh, the sperm being ejected from this crown, ejected from this crown of sperm thorn starfish and the pose that it's in is a classic spawning pose. Here are a very rarely seen, this is a very rarely seen spawning event by this one, this cushion star um, shooting eggs up. Okay, they also asexually reproduce by regeneration. So they're amazing, they can grow new body parts I'll show you a picture next. Here we go. So one thing that um, that is possible to do with a starfish is, uh, and I don't recommend it because it, even though these things have no brain, uh, it's still I don't recommend torturing animals. But if you were to take a starfish and put it in a bucket of water and just do nothing to it, let the bucket of water get um, the water quality get really foul this starfish would break into five different pieces and the arms will try to crawl away from each other each with the idea that each arm hopefully will find a more suitable uh, habitat where it can survive and keep growing so but if an arm breaks away they can regenerate this way and you can see how it's regenerating uh, new arms from the single one they also can um, uh, split in half and as a way of reproducing asexually. And this is called fission, where they split in half and you can see the new arms growing from the, uh, the parent. So they're very good at reproducing.